When I first loaded up Premiere Pro, this was my genuine reaction. Because I was someone that just came from editing basic videos in iMovie and nothing very complicated. So when you open Premiere Pro, it can look very intimidating, like a bat with boxing gloves on. So yeah, in this video, let's talk through the basics of editing video in Premiere Pro. Buckle in, it's another Giant Wednesday creative. So hi, my name is Alex from Sleeping Giant Media. I'm the senior creative executive, which is a lot of fancy words, but they sound nice and it's got creative in the title, so I'm happy. So maybe you wanna take your video editing to the next level and there's loads of other choices of video software out there, but Premiere Pro is the one for me. I have tried the rest. For me personally, Premiere Pro just works the best. So let's start by opening. Premiere Pro. I'm running Adobe Premiere Pro 2021. Okay, so this will probably be the first screen that you see when you open up. So I'm gonna wanna create uh, just a new project. Cool. Don't worry about any of these other things as well. And then hit okay, and it's gonna open up Premiere Pro for you. Now, as I said in the intro, this was my genuine reaction when I opened this. Okay, so when I looked at this, I was like, what? Is, what is this? Nothing is obvious. I open it up thinking, this is all gonna be self-explanatory. This is just gonna be an absolute breeze. I'll figure it out without any help. I couldn't, I couldn't. Because look, you've got four boxes. Each of those boxes have multiple tabs inside of them. I don't know what this is. What's that? Effects, effects controls. It, it seems intimidating, I promise you. It's not that difficult. I watched a, a few videos on YouTube to teach myself when I first started out, but I still learn things every day, um, with just little tricks and stuff and how to do them. So yeah, don't stop your learning after this video. So let's start by talking about the layout. So yeah, I'm gonna attempt to make clear the purpose of these boxes, um, at least the way that I've got it laid out here. So if yours looks ever slightly different, I apologize, but I'm fairly certain this is like the default layout. So with our project open, um, this is our media folder, so our project folder. Um, and you can see that the project we've got selected is Giant Wednesday Creative. So we're gonna want to click on import media to start, double click there, um, and that's gonna open up your finder or your Windows Explorer window. Cool, so I've imported these two um, just motion graphics files from Invato Elements. What we're gonna do is just, we'll, we'll do a simple video where we transition between the two of them, maybe add some text over the top. So with Premiere Pro, you can import most um, compatible forms of media. So this is a, a movie file here, but um, MP4, you'll be able to just add straight into this. Um, thankfully, it can handle a lot of the different kind of uh, video types. So now we're gonna wanna start making our sequence. Our sequence is the name of the, the whole run of the timeline. So when you export your final video with all the cut edited bits inside, um, that's our sequence. Um, so you can create a new sequence by going into your project window and going file, new, and then sequence. And that's gonna bring up um, a bunch of different op options. There's a lot of jargon in here. So, um, you know, if you don't know your AVC intras from your ProRes RAWs, <laughs> I don't know what they are, please someone tell me. What I have done before is I've created a new sequence uh, preset by going into new sequence, going into settings, and actually setting um, the frame size to the frame size that I want. But what I do for the meantime, um, just to make things a little bit easier for you, is if the final video that you wanna work with um, happens to be the same size as the video that you're using. So for example, if I look at the properties um, of this, I can see in the settings that this image size is 1920 uh, width by 1080 height. And that's actually what I want the final video to be. So what happens is if I drag that video, um, into the timeline, it will actually create, this is our the preview of our sequence window down here. So now we have our timeline and this video, just to confirm for you, if I go into sequence settings, this is now 1920 by 1080, at 169. That's gonna work on most of your channels like um, Facebook, social channels. So what happens if I don't wanna just ex import the whole thing? Obviously the, you might have like a five minute long video. You don't want to just drop it straight into the timeline like this. So I'm gonna delete that out. So double click on it, it's actually gonna open up a tab up here, which is your source window. And maybe actually this is a bad 
this is, this is a bad um, example to show you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna load up this nice drone shot of um, giant towers as well, just to show you. So this is just a simple spin of the lovely giant towers. So as you can see, as I was saying before, this is a 12, this is about just over 12 seconds of footage. If I drop it into here, it's just gonna be the entire 12 seconds of footage. But what if I don't want all of that video um, to be in it? Well, this is where I can introduce you to some shortcuts that I use every day. So let's say I want to take, I don't want this part here, but I want a slight bit from the intro and I want to go around for a few seconds before and, and then use that footage in there. So you tap I to uh, set your in point and then scroll or play along to where you want to edit out and press O to set your out point. And then with this selected, you can, you can drag the video only, the audio only if your video has audio, um, this one doesn't, um, or just select the actual um, image itself, click and drag, and it will drag both the audio and the visual over. Now, this is what happens when you um, bring a clip over that actually is a larger size or a smaller size than your sequence. Um, it's gonna say it doesn't match the sequence settings. Do you want to turn your sequence into this 4K file, which is what the drone footage is, or do you wanna keep it as the 1920 by 1080? Um, we wanna keep um, the 1080, so I'm gonna click keep at existing settings, and it's gonna automatically resize um, that video for you. So if I do the same thing here, set my in point, set my out point, and just drag the video in um, there as well. You'll notice here at the bottom of the timeline, there's um, your video channels here. These will just automatically add new ones as new, as new videos come in. So you'll see you can sort of stack videos on top of each other. So if I just click and drag up, if I drag up above that, that's gonna make another. If I drag up, it's gonna make video five. Um, and then you've got this, this bar at the bottom and then your audio channels start. So audio one, two, three, and equally, the further down you go, it's gonna just keep making more and more for you. So with this one, I want uh, this four seconds of the drone footage, followed by this weird 80s thing, and then maybe a few seconds of this video here. So again, set in point, out point. Let's quickly drag it through here. So now I've got three videos, one after the other in my timeline. A bit weird, I know, but you know, the best things are weird. So up here is where you can do a lot of the controls of what is in your sequence. Um, so by clicking along on these tabs, so we've got effects and effect controls. Let me show you how they work. Um, so under effects, you'll see there's this list here, audio transitions, video effects, and video transitions. Let's say I want a transition between these two images. Um, you would simply go to video transitions. You're presented with um, a choice here. And I want to go uh, dissolve. And this will give you uh, the options of like cross dissolve, which is where the videos just fade into one another. Um, dip to black, where it will go black before um, transitioning to the next one. So I would click, and hold and drag that. If you hover over it and let go, it's gonna create that cross dissolve for us. So that's gonna fade into that one. And you can actually set the length as well of that. So if you actually want that transition to happen quicker, you can drag it to be shorter, or if you want it to be perhaps the full length, then it will slowly fade in like that. So what happens if we want to move a graphic around our image? I'll very briefly touch on the effect controls. Um, so here we have the wonderful Sean Loveland as a PNG, and I'm gonna drag that to the layer um, that's above our video channel, so you can see that this spans the whole length. And you can just click and drag the ends to set their length um, on this. Now under effect controls, we've got um, options for position and scale, and by clicking and dragging them, you're gonna be able to control the size of that thing there, or alternatively, if you actually click on the word itself, you can um, click and drag um, on the actual image. And the same for position. In order to create movement in these things, um, you have a lot of control in Premiere and um, as you practice, you'll find it just becomes second nature for you. With um, this person, let's say I want Sean to move from the left to the right um, over the course of um, the initial video. Um, so uh, what I would do is with this, you can either drag this end to stop where you want it to stop, like that, so he'll disappear. Um, or alternatively, to make it easier, you can press C on the keyboard for cut and click create a cut mark, um, which will split that layer into two. 
Um, v just takes you back to this, um, this point selection tool, um, or you can just click on it there, and then you can just delete the rest of that layer. Really handy, the cut um, tool is something that you should use if you wanna chop up parts of your video or maybe cut parts out maybe um, in an audio, someone saying uh, a lot of times, probably like I have for this whole video, um, you can just, <laughs> just set it. <laughs> you can chop out the um, audio, uh, the, the little erms and gaps um, in the video just to make it a little bit cleaner. So anyway, what I was talking about was let's say we want Sean to move from the left to the right over the duration of this initial video. What I would do is I would click on um, this little uh, stopwatch here in front of position and that toggles the animation. And what that's gonna do is in this little window here, it's gonna create keyframe, which means that at that point in the video, it saved that setting of position. I don't want it to be here, I want it to be at the beginning, so I can click on this keyframe and just drag, keep dragging it left and it will stop when it reaches the beginning. If you scroll right to the end and you change the position, so let's say I, I move him along the x-axis until I move him there, then it's going to slowly transition between them two. I'm going to drag that to the end as well, so I know that it's this point and it's this point. And you'll, if you pay attention to the position marker, you'll see that it actually changes the number um, as it scrolls. So if I play the video, he's now going to take a little journey flying over. So that's very briefly how to do it. Um, if you want to adjust the scale, again, you do the same thing with the scale. If you want to adjust the rotation, it's the same thing. That's the principle really of animation, um, of the simple graphics. You can do the same with video, you can move them in, move them out. Um, it's very versatile, so, so have a play around with it. I'm gonna share a little insider, little knowledge-y bit. Maybe I shouldn't, I don't know, who knows? Maybe I like to keep myself mysterious. I work with a tool called Mr. Horse. Funny name, I know, but it's, uh, it's very good. Uh, it's called Premiere Composer and it's from uh, Mr. Horse. We're not endorsed by them as much as I'd like to be. Um, it's just that good that I have to sing praises about it. It's uh, not very expensive, but you honestly won't regret it because it's worth any amount of money you pay on it. What that is, that gives you um, multiple uh, elements that you can use within your Premiere Pro workflow um, and it honestly could not be simpler. Um, just for the this video, let me just show you their sound effects that you can have. So if I expand that, you've got all of these different sound effects that are included. So let's say you want a pop sound, you can see all these. So there's a good pop sound and you can actually adjust the pitch even. So let's just keep it at zero. You can just drag the audio straight in to your timeline Human beings. and it will play the sound at that point. Equally, um, what's incredible with this tool is you have transitions here. So let's say, actually, I want to click there and delete that cross dissolve between the two. And I want to have a, a funkier transition with camera pan. Let's say here, I want to go left to right. I can just click on that transition, drag it so that those cut marks you see there line up with where the, uh, the two videos cross over. And let's see how that looks. Just as always been, just as always been. Pretty, pretty cool, right, come on. So the next quick thing I want to touch on is color. Um, I'm not going to get into this too much because I could literally create a whole other video about that. So I'm going to start by just dragging in this case study video that we did with the Quartermasters in Folkestone. So this has got audio and visual. So if I drag both of those things in, you can see it's going to take the audio and the visual channel um, in drag that in to our timeline. Now you can actually adjust the color of this. So up here you've got, you can change your editing workflow. Um, so if I select color at the top, it's gonna bring up my color window. I'm gonna be able to adjust the actual color of this image. So here's our timeline, it's in a different place and I can adjust all the colors here. So the exposure, contrast, um, set the temperature. So you can, again, you can have a play around with that. So if you film something and the color isn't quite right, you can very easily adjust it within Premiere. So the final thing I wanna talk about is exporting your video. Go File, followed by Export, and then Media. And that's gonna capture the entire length of your sequence. 
If this isn't already selected, select H264. That is the format code for MP4 or MPEG4 video, which is very compatible video codec. If you click here, you, you'll be able to set where your file gets saved. These are the dimensions that it's gonna be output with. Click on render at maximum depth and then use maximum render quality again. Most of these other settings should just be automatically, so just go with the defaults for them. And then you want to click on export and that's gonna render our file here. It shouldn't take very long because this is a 10 second video. So that was it from me. Uh, that was a very, very quick introduction into Premiere Pro, just a few basic tips on the window, the layout, and the basic workflow of putting a video together that resembles something. Hopefully your videos that you put together make a tiny bit more sense than the ones that I put together. Really appreciate you giving this video a watch. If you did like it, there's loads of other videos like this on the channel, and there will be loads more to come, we can guarantee it. So give us a like, give us a subscribe, do all of that stuff. But otherwise, that's all from me. If there was any tips that I left out, or if there's anything blaringly obvious that I missed, just let me know, I'm human. But yeah, for now, thanks so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time on another Giant Wednesday Creative. Batman? Batman's the victor? Oh, I don't think so.